In the 1800s, Illinois boasted more than 200 covered bridges. There are now nine remaining in the state, with five registered as historic. We're fortunate to have five of these bridges reside within the WQPT viewing area. Let's start with the Alleman Covered Bridge, located just south of Aquaca, Illinois. The Alleman was also known as the Henderson Covered Bridge, or sometimes the Aquaca Wagon Bridge. Completed in 1865 by Jacob Alleman, the bridge carried traffic until 1934. Alleman had built barns and bridges in Pennsylvania before moving to Aquaca in 1858, and this bridge was built in the same location to replace what was previously the Eames Bridge. In 1935, the Illinois Division of Highways acquired the bridge from Henderson County, where it became the feature structure in a rest area park off of Highway 164. An undated newspaper article states that there were two covered bridges in the area, and at the time, no one knew who had built them until Marion Alleman called the newspaper to inform them that his great-grandfather Jacob built and designed the bridge after one that he had built in Pennsylvania spanning the Juanita River. It was framed in Aquaca, then transported to the Henderson Creek location. It was made out of hand-hewn native black walnut and built double strength meaning if the arch gave way, it would still be supported by the truss, and vice versa. A 1930 news article compares the Alleman with the nearby Jack's Mill Bridge. Jack's Mill was constructed in the English lattice design, while the Alleman is of the bolstered truss type, the better of the two. They claim, in 1930, that the Alleman still had a crown in the cords almost as perfect as the day that it was built, whereas the Jack Mill Bridge sagged and swayed until it required piers underneath to support it. Regardless of the Jack's Mill's limitations, the article states that both had been wonderful bridges. In 1982, floodwaters lifted the Alleman from its abutments, where it floated downstream toward the Mississippi River, until it lodged, ironically, against the new Route 164 bridge. Two years later, it was rebuilt in its original location, using most of the salvaged original timbers, with a modification because of the flood, raising the foundation an additional three and a half feet. The bridge was rededicated on September 9, 1984. Covered bridges sheltered travelers from storms. They provided a safe way for cattle to cross, since open bridges could startle the cows. If the cattle became spooked, it could cause a stampede. Early settlers claimed the design reminded the cattle and horses of the barns in which they normally found food and shelter, which helped them to keep calm. There is a sign above both entrances of the bridge which reads, $5 fine for leading or driving any beast faster than a walk, or driving more than 30 head of cattle, mules, or horses at a time on or across this bridge. The Alleman Bridge was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1975. If you stopped in the small Lincoln Highway town of Morrison, Illinois, it looks like a town which should have a covered bridge. The downtown features historic architecture and charm, all nestled within just a few short blocks. Dear girls, we made the trip home in three hours less time, and the roads were better most of all the way home. We thoroughly enjoyed it. We expected to spend a week or so in Dixon camping with some friends sometime this month. Let us hear from you. The town never actually had a covered bridge, so they built one in 2001. Located north of town and south of the Morrison Rockwood State Park, the bridge spans the Rock Creek.
A separate walkway on the west keeps pedestrians safe from traffic as they enjoy the off-road recreational trail. The Morrison Covered Bridge holds an impressive width and an expansive height to accommodate the present-day two-lane road. Twisting your way through the narrow country roads east of Galesburg, you'll find the Wolf Covered Bridge. In 1831, the state of Illinois granted Knox County $200 to build the bridge across the Spoon River. As yet, no Masonic views of any kind. Hope you like this one, Marie. It may have taken until 1848 for Jacob Wolf to begin construction, and at first it was just a wooden deck. He owned over a thousand acres of pasture and would routinely drive 500 head of his cattle across the bridge for grazing. Years later, Civil War Captain James Burkhalter built an enclosure in 1873, worried, as those before him had worried, that a stampede was possible. Unfortunately, due to its remote location, the Wolf Bridge has been heavily vandalized over the years. It is filled with graffiti, and located underneath the bridge are well-worn places where the uncaring dispose of their trash and litter. Unbelievably, located directly under the West Span is a campfire pit. One can smell ash when visiting, and with a large enough fire, the wooden floorboards would most certainly ignite. In 1994, the original bridge was destroyed by three teenage arsonists who were high on LSD. One witness said that they could see a glow in the sky at 3 a.m., but nothing was actually discovered until 8 the following morning, where residents found the bridge burned to the ground, a pile of smoldering ashes, apparently burning all throughout the night. After a lengthy trial, the underage juveniles were found guilty on lesser charges and simply placed on probation. In addition to the fire destroying the bridge, it was removed from the National Register of Historic Places. A wider and taller replica was commissioned in 1999 at a cost of $900,000 to accommodate more modern vehicles. Heat sensors were installed to trigger sprinkler systems in the event of another fire. Each of the four bridges located in the WQPT viewing area have security cameras installed to deter vandalism and trespassing. In fact, prior to having security cameras, the Alleman Bridge had been set on fire twice in 2003. One blaze caused minor damage. The second destroyed a section of the roof and a portion of the wall. Dear Mother Bradley, Arrived in Galesburg on schedule. Expect Bob will meet me in Princeton in a couple hours. My seat partner was a Catholic priest from Denver, Father McShane. Love, Ira. In 1998, the Federal Covered Bridge Protection Program was set up to protect the history of our covered bridges, with over $1 million awarded to Illinois. Even with modern technology and the installation of security cameras, remote locations are still vulnerable. If you visit the bridge today, the degree of vandalism is easy to see, and a strong case could be made to add additional protection to what is now state property, valued at approximately $1,700,000. Perhaps legislation could be introduced to increase charges for all of those who commit crimes at registered historic locations. Hi, Daddy. Now it's Pud with the measles. Wish Jim would have them too. Make company for Pud. Did you ever see this bridge? It's a few miles east of our uncle's place. One of the very few left in the U.S. Love to Daddy, Lyle. In 1784, 
Captain Samuel T. Swift was born in Dorchester, Massachusetts. He captained a merchant ship for 24 years for the Boston and London Shipping Company. He is said to have been the first American to make a sea voyage to the northwest coast of North America, along with circumnavigating the globe five times. He retired in 1836 and two years later moved to Princeton with his wife and their seven children where they purchased acres of land. He died in 1862 and his obituary stated that he was, quote, a man of marked individuality of character, among other accolades. In 1915, a steel truss bridge was built and named after him. In 2006, when that bridge was disassembled, the replacement covered bridge retained the title. Captain Swift Bridge utilizes Theodore Burr's patented bridge design, made entirely out of wood with an outer skin of Douglas fir. Like the Morrison Bridge, it accommodates two lanes with a 28-foot width, 16-foot clearance, and 128-foot span. The Captain Swift isn't the only covered bridge in Bureau County. In fact, the other location has been so popular with visitors that the Swift Bridge was also built with visitors in mind. Though not built to traditional scale, the expansiveness of the double lane bridge is impressive. The red covered bridge is north of the Captain Swift, also near Princeton. Dear Miss Miles, Papa and I have been driving through the country around here. I enjoy it very much. There is a great deal of beautiful scenery. It was completed in 1863 at a cost of $3,148 and features a 95-foot span, also crossing Big Bureau Creek, and rests on masonry piers. Dear Jane, hi. Just relaxing and eating. Homesick for Bill, but it does feel good to sit. Janelle is getting quite a collection of captain's chairs. Keep telling her she ought to give them to us. See you, Mike. from normal. Ran across this the other day. That sign was something. Everyone here well and doing their darndest to show us a good time. Have found lots of places Charlie recognizes. Everyone sends their best and hope you are much better. Love Betty and Charlie. At the time it was built, the route leading through Red Covered Bridge was a major road connecting Peoria to Galena. Signs placed on both sides of the bridge hold a similar warning to those who entered the Alleman Bridge. $5 fine for driving more than 12 horses, mules, or cattle at one time, or for leading any beast faster than a walk on or across this bridge. $5 in 1863 equates to $120 today, and the 5 mile per hour speed limit equals the average speed of a trotting horse. This is one of the sights we saw in our rambles around the country. Have a sister-in-law who has huge collection of these bridges. She has visited most of them. They are her hobby. Are you feeling better? Hope so, Marion and Perry. As an iconic landmark in Bureau County and the most popular of the remaining bridges for tourism, you will find a park and walking trail accompany the bridge location. It is the only original historic covered bridge in Illinois still open to traffic, and that alone is a testament to its remarkable construction. Alleman, Morrison, Wolf, 
Captain Swift, and the Red Covered Bridges, all within a day drive for WQPT viewers. Thanks to decades of efforts from enthusiasts, public officials, and historic societies, we hope to see all of these architectural gems continue to exist for many generations to come.